Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to go over everything you need to know about general purpose switching relays. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. If you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and let's get straight into it. Many have been asking if I can go over general purpose relays and here it is, the most common and most confusing looking relay on the market. Here's a close up look at the front of our relay and it seems confusing but it really isn't. Once we identify all of our points, it's really not so bad. So let's begin with our coil. So if we look closely, these four points are our coil. Here's one side of our coil these two points and here is the other side of this coil these two points as we all know there is a coil and a set of points for every single relay on the market I like these relays because you could actually see the coil if you look here this copper winding is our coil and if we look even closer one end of the coil gets connected right here and the other end gets connected right here. You can see a small little piece of copper conductor right here attaching to this point which comes from our coil and it is the exact same for the opposite end right here. If we are facing our relay face up you can see we can read our numbers here as you would typically read them and they're not backwards so when looking at the relay in this position your coil is always going to be on the bottom and like we said these two points and these two points are a coil here's one side and here is the other one thing you will notice is that the coil is the only thing that is not actually labeled on the relay over here you can see a one a three two four five six for all these points which are labeled and that's going to be our contacts and our coil is not actually labeled but in this case you can physically see it and just by theory you will know and one thing I recommend is looking at a diagram if we look closely at our relay we have a set of numbers ranging from 1 to 6 each number represents a point on the relay and each point on the relay has its own purpose. When you can't find a diagram, it's always good to know there is a diagram right on the relay itself and it's always going to be on the face of it. So if we look closely, we have points 1, 2, and 3. This is point 1, this is point 2, and this is point 3. This represents one relay. Next we have point 4 which represents here. This is point 5 and this is point 6 and this represents another relay. So what we actually see here are two separate relays. We have two sets of points. So let's go over our first relay. We have three terminals. We have a common and we have a set of normally closed points and a set of normally open points. If we look closely for terminal number two, it comes in here. We have these lines with a dash going across. This is our symbol for normally closed. If we look at over here, we have these two lines here which have no dash in between and this stands for normally open points. For one, you see there's nothing going on. So if we actually read this, one is common. Number two is our normally closed set of points. And number three is our normally open set of points. If we look here, this is our next relay. We have terminals four, five, and six. Four, once again, is our common number five is our normally closed set of points and number six 
is our normally closed set of points. I like to say points, some others like to say contacts. Regardless, you know what I'm talking about. We must understand how a relay works and we must understand what normally open and what normally closed means. When we say normally open or normally closed, this is our contacts when there is no power applied, when our coil is not energized. So when the coil is not energized, meaning there's no power being applied to it, let's see number of points one and two is normally closed, one and three is normally open. When the coil is energized and there's power being applied to it, we're gonna create a magnetic field and now points one and two will open. Keep in mind it was normally closed. When power is applied, points one and two are gonna open. And then normally, normally open points one and three are gonna close when power is applied. For right now, we're gonna run a quick test. The meter I am using is the Fluke 902 FC HVAC clamp meter, true RMS. And we're just gonna go over this normally open and normally closed theory. And once again, this is when there is no voltage being applied to the coil. So our coil is not being energized. Of course, there is continuity there. It's because one side of the coil is here, gets wound around, and then goes to the other. You will always have continuity in your coil. And if not, then you got a bad relay and it will never work. So, points one and two should have continuity. And we do. Points four and five, we should have continuity. And that is because these two points, these contacts are normally closed. Now between one and three, there is no continuity. And points four and six, there is no continuity. And that proves that normally open and normally closed theory. Now, when this coil is energized, it's gonna be the exact opposite. Points one and two will open. Points four and five will open. Then points one and three will close. And then points four and six will close. Here is a diagram of a general purpose relay. As we're looking at it face up, you can see our bottom points is our coil. If we just read over here, we can see points one and two are normally closed and points four and five are normally closed. Next, if we look here, we can see points one and three are normally open and points four and six are normally open. So let's just go over this one more time. Our coil here is always gonna be on the bottom. You will have continuity. It's just one point here, then our coil gets wrapped around, and then we have the ending point here. So you're gonna have continuity, and this is your coil. Next, on the left edges, is always gonna be your common that is point one and four next in the middle is always going to be your normally closed contacts which is two and five and next on the right is always going to be your normally open contacts which is three and six which is a nice way to memorize this relay so let's go over the top relay if we look common you're gonna have power there's always gonna be power on points one and four so there's gonna be power here and depending where the other side of your um, wire or whatever you're using to control is gonna be it will determine what happens let me explain that so there's gonna be power here on one and it's either gonna be sending power through point two or three or sometimes you might even see both so Here's our common, and you can see one and two, they're touching. Then one and three, there's an open space here, so it's open. So one and two, 
is normally closed, 1 and 3 is normally open, 4 and 5 is normally closed, and 4 and 6 is normally open. I just want to quickly go over how this would work in the real field. So when our coil is not energized, we're going to have power being sent from our common to our normally closed. This will be sending power across. Also, we're going to be sending power across from 4 and 6. These two is going to be power coming from here and then coming out of here and going to wherever it may be as these are used in many industries. Next, from here to here, our points are open. And from here to here, our points are open so there will be no power being sent across from these two. Next, if our coil is energized, now there will no, be no more power being sent from here to here. In fact, this is going to open and it's going to stop the flow of electricity. Same for these two, 4 and 6 and 1 and 2. Now, since we have power applied, now we're going to be sending power from here to here. And once again, we're going to be sending power from here to here. It's the exact opposite. It sounds tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not so bad. It is very important that we understand what a relay in general works like so we can understand general purpose relays. Here I have a board that I'm currently working on. It is almost finished and I will go deeper into how a general purpose relay works and I'm going to show you how it works with no power applied and with power applied. I have been working on this for quite a little while now and I am extremely excited to show you guys how everything works and I will go deeper into how general purpose relays work as well as how relays work in general. And if you found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.